Cage Warriors middleweight division is stacked to say the least. Two athletes jostling for the number one contender spot are Sweden's Matt Nilsson and England's Chris Mark One Scott. Nilsson is a decorated grappler with fresh impetus following an injury setback. Chris Scott is also very well versed in the submission game and he is adamant that despite the odds favouring the Swede, he is very capable of causing an upset. Hi everybody, I think some of you guys might recognise me. I always felt so welcome when I was in Glasgow. It was friendly people and I loved it there. Now it's time for another Swede from the same hometown as me to come and battle it out in, in Glasgow. So make sure you support him because uh, he needs it. He needs your support here tonight. I've had 12 fights so far. Uh, I'm coming from a loss. I'm just trying to, to stack up a few good victories here in, in Cage Warriors and, and hopefully challenge for the, the middleweight belt. I started off just doing jiu-jitsu and no intentions to fight. It just went from there really. I picked up a lot of semi-pro wins and I'm 6-1 and one pro now. Of course I like to, to look at my opponent. I mean, it's, I think it's, a, it's an advantage. Uh, when not giving that opportunity, uh, it becomes more clear that you have to focus on your own skill set and your own strengths more than his weaknesses. Fighting for Cage Royce is, is basically all I wanted to do. It's the pinnacle of European MMA at the moment. We give us big fights, European opponents. I had to sign the contract signed before they'd even printed it. I was ready to sign, so it's great for me. I think he has seven fights. All of his win by submission, so I figure he's a grappler. He's a well-rounded fighter, so there's a lot of footage out there, and I've hopefully I've done my homework. Yeah, I might knock him out, I might submit him, and go my ambition to keep winning and to, to constantly climb and, and strive up for it. And here we go, five fans, three rounds. This scheduled in the middleweight division, making his way to the cage first. Fighting out of the blue corner from Sunderland, England, Chris Scott. So here is Cage Warriors debutant Chris Mark One Scott representing Section 18 and bringing a six and one record. Now Chris Scott, mostly known for his submission game, but they are wins that he's picked up on the back of striking assault. So don't underestimate this man's credentials in those striking exchanges. He's never really trained in the gi. It's always been no gi wrestling, which really transitions well to mixed martial arts. He'd be happy with a submission battle this evening against Matt Nielsen. However, I'm not sure that's exactly how it's going to go down. His only loss is to former Cage Warriors headliner, Alan Love, and that was back in early 2009. So really putting together some good impetus going forward. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of people really you know, saying some good things about Chris Scott, I think this is a, a step up. It's fair to say it's a step up in competition for him tonight. Matt Nielsen, a very decorated grappler, so it will be interesting to see how they stack up in that regard. But as you mentioned, John, you know, the submission wins were set up by strikes. They were very much forced, you know, via the standing assault and the, the ground and pound. So, you know, you can't underestimate him. I, I, I just find it quite interesting that he only competes once or twice a year. So, uh, you know, very measured in who he chooses to fight. Yeah, a full-time job, and he said a 66 to one outsider just won the Grand National, and not many predicted that. So the pressure is off for me tonight. Here's his opponent making his way to the cage, fighting out of the red corner, fighting out of Copenhagen, Denmark. Mats Nilsson. And it's a warm welcome back to Mats Nilsson, who's representing Rumble Sports from Sweden and coming with a 9-2 and 1 record. We know Nilsson for his impressive submission win over Tommy Spear last year, but many things have changed in the Swedes' life since then. He recently married and became a father, which has shaped his approach to be even more focused and ambitious. He now represents Rumble Sports under Chue Chunka, who is known for creating knockout artists. This should combine well with the very decorated grappling past that Nilsson boasts. 
He also tells me he's a very different fighter these days and the time he spent away nursing injuries, etc., has been productively used to improve his striking and his setups. Yeah, I mean, the injuries have, have kept him away. They kept him out of uh, appearing back on Cage Warriors. He's had a couple of fights since we last saw him at the start of last year in Beirut. Very decorated grappler, feeler world champion, BJJ brown belt, uh, black belt in judo as well. But recently he's decided, you know, mixed martial arts is my focus. And I've got a family now, so that's going to take the rest of my time. And I'm going to put the submission grappling on the back burner. But, you know, it, it serves him so well uh, in the sport of MMA. He also has incredibly uh, powerful takedowns. Gets a lot, of, a lot of amplitude on those strikes. Constantly pushes forward. You know, been working a lot on his striking. So... Again, it's very interesting to see where each one of these fighters chooses to let this fight take place. Well, he said he's going to use his boxing, specifically the jab, to transition to grappling, be unpredictable, mix things up, and be more aggressive. And now, five fans, here we go. Three rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a mixed martial artist, standing six feet, one inch tall. Weighing it officially 185 pounds, his professional record stands at six victories and one defeat. Fighting out of Sunderland, England, here is Chris Scott. Yeah. And next is the opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Also a mixed martial artist, he too stands six feet, one inch tall. His weight, 184 and three quarter pounds. A veteran of 12 professional fights. He brings nine victories, two defeats, and one draw into the cage. Fighting out of Copenhagen, Denmark, by way of Sweden, here is Mats Nilsson. Your referee in charge of the action, Mark Goddard. So Mark Goddard stands between these two fighters. We have Chris Marquand Scott in the black with red. He's in the blue corner with Matt Nilsson in Welcome. the black shorts in the red corner. Wasting no time getting underway. Chris Scott firing the first couple of straight shots. A lot of good movement from both of these guys BW. straight out of the gate. BW enthusiast Chris Scott will be looking to motor to victory tonight. I really like the shoulder rolling from both of these guys so far. Good straight shots as well. Yeah, Nielsen seems to really have sharpened up his, his striking. Yeah, you can see those good straight punches in the arsenal of Scott as well, though. Oh, and there's a, a lovely transition to the takedown off the strikes from Matt Nielsen. Well, that's what he wanted. Big pickup. Just like we said in the walkout, you saw Chris Scott motioned as though he was going to go for a guillotine on the way down. Immediately looking to stay active, though. Well, it looks like that message from... Mr. Henrik Larsson, the adopted son of Glasgow, has really got the fans behind Mats Nielsen. Yeah, right overhook for Chris Scott. He's probably going to look for a triangle with his left leg here. You can see Nielsen starting to try and walk over to the half guard. He's staying nice and tight and low. You see he tries to flatten his opponent out, but uh, good work from Scott. You see Alex Enland in the section 18 corner a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner that was featured oh, legs. recently on cage warriors yeah high guard coming up from uh, Chris Scott you can see Nielsen shrugging his shoulders forward he's gonna be very much aware quick armbar defense in you see he was able to get the grip all the way into the bicep and behind the leg that's a way of knowing that he saw that submission coming a long way off Nielsen is a decorated grappler. He's also won mixed martial arts awards it's for uh, being one of the most informed fighters. They have an award ceremony in Sweden, and he's picked up a, a couple of trophies there too. So very well respected in his he's, home country. He's always had a, a very, very good strike rate uh, on top for his ground and pound. You know, he's going to look to pass. He's going to look to get a more dominant position, and then. You know, he's really going to throw a huge volume of shots the way of Chris Scott. Of course, he can pull those submissions out of anywhere. He's very, very quick at chaining those submissions together, as you'd expect from a grappler of his calibre. Max Nielsen really is top of the pile in Sweden. The man ahead of him is Tua Trong, who he narrowly lost to. And we've seen the success that he's had. He's gone over into... 
the ultimate fighter scene. He can probably be, and he was recently on the UFC billing. So it's given more motivation to Nielsen because he knows he's in within reach of the, the highest echelons of the sport. Yeah, and as you say, John, that was a hard fought decision loss. You know, Nielsen's never been stopped in his career. He's a very, very tough individual. Good work to flatten his man out again. You see him try and secure the head, put the shoulders on the mat, but just leaving enough space for Scott to eject the hips, work his way back to guard. We're talking about finishes, Josh. Interestingly, nine of the 12 fighters on the main card so tonight have never been knocked position. out from strikes. That from StatCat, I've been told. <laughs> well, we saw he's looking for this armbar on the left arm of Matt Nielsen again. Always the threat there for Scott to Twist the hips out, create that angle. Gonna be aware of the up kicks. A few options here for creating some posture and stuffing the, the legs. It looked so measured from Nielsen, but he did eat an up kick. Waited a bit too long to try and make a decision of where he wanted to plant himself. I'm surprised he didn't throw the legs to the side uh, as he threw that punch, but he is working well from top position. Again, good strong underhook for Chris Scott, though. Combined with the lockdown on that leg, if he can get really low and underneath Nielsen, there's a lot of opportunity to move him. But you see that grip that Nielsen has with his right arm is really helping him stay in place, maintain that top position. Very good technical defense from the Swede. Shutting down. Mark one, Scott is the Swede as he looks to improve his position so that he can do damage. Last 10 seconds in this opening round. Stop. Well, it was destined to be a technical encounter, Josh. Yeah, when I spoke with Chris Scott, he said, really and truly, both of us want to be in top position. Well, he found himself on the bottom for the most part of that round. Yeah, I mean, a technical encounter really is the best way to describe it, John. I mean, what you've got to have an appreciation of is it may not look like there are these big energetic movements, but there's a lot of very small shifts in the hips, very small shifts in controlling the posture, you know, trying to re-establish who's, who's just got that, that little bit of grip or clinch work differently. And, you know, Matt Nielsen did what he needed to do in that round. Very controlling, very measured. We saw some... Uh, some flashes from Chris Scott. He got close with that armbar at one point, but you know he's going to have to, I think, just be a little bit more explosive if he's going to catch Nielsen off guard here. Corners out. Well, round two ahead. Round two, guys. Scheduled for three. and lighter on his feet. Very upright, uh, high guard for Chris Scott, isn't it? Yeah, but he can maybe generate a bit more power if he sticks one of those shots to sneak an uppercut through. A bit of takedown defense there. Nielsen closed the distance. I think Nielsen would be happy if he can Implement the game plan again with big shots from Chris Scott coming in volume. Yeah, having some success there when Nielsen had his back on the fence. Just look at the, the back of Matt Nielsen. It's a lot of a lot of musculature there. Well, he's been throwing guys around for about 15 years, and yeah, that I develops mean, that kind of the, the core back strength, and core the, strength. Yeah, the, the long-time judokas have is is phenomenal and it's you know it's another weapon in the grappling arsenal he's got some wrestling he's got obviously the black belt and judo the brown belt and brazilian jiu-jitsu you know there's lots of different styles of grappling he's going to be experienced in and maybe perhaps a little bit more so than chris scott who's just been you know a bit more in this no-gi mindset we well, saw scott try and hit the switch there but i mean nilson was just steadfast he wasn't being moved Good work up top to immediately get it on the hips. Huge connection here. Manchester, once he linked the hands, it's very, very hard for your opponent to get their base uh, wide again. 
Nelson no, so looking to step over the guard. Not sure it's going to be quite that easy this evening. Yeah, notice he didn't really want to give the, the grip on the hips up too easily because that it just allows the space for your opponent to, to start moving again, start working. Nice work with the hooks from Chris Scott to yeah, just give himself a bit of time to get back to the feet. Nielsen with his head planted in the chin. Well, that underhook is... Well, he needs to keep the underhook. He's giving it up. Again, big pickup, but you see Chris Scott immediately yeah, jump for the, for the neck. neck. It's a different style of takedown defense. And you're almost accepting that, hey, I'm going to go to the floor, but I'm going to secure the position I want on the way down. Not able to, though, and uh, Matt Nielsen has... Well, he sort of gave up on it, Josh. He, he, did, didn't, yeah. he didn't sort of shovel in again. I don't think perhaps he just realized he didn't quite have, have the grip under the chin or you know, something wasn't right. And he's adjusted well, though. You know, we've seen he's, he's getting ready to throw some offense off his back, but you know, there's going to come a point where he just needs to start being a little bit more active. I think as long as Nielsen starts or keeps pressing the action, looking to pass, he's going to keep putting Chris Scott on the back foot here. Well, I am impressed with uh, Chris Scott's work. I know that he's probably on the defense, but Matt Nielsen truly is a world-class grappler. Yeah. He's uh, won tournaments all around the globe, and as we say, he's belted at the highest level in both judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And he's traveled and he's trained with a lot of other gyms as well. You know, he spent time uh, in America. He spent time in Thailand. You know, this guy's been all over the shop, and, you know, I think just rededicating himself to, to mixed martial arts alongside his family life is uh, really going to drive him forward. Good work up against the cage here. Kimura grip for Chris Scott. Let's see if he can use it at all. Again, looking for the switch. All of the guys from the northeast of England are, are so well skilled. They, I've never quite got my head around how it how the teams work up there, but they tend to all come together in that part of the world yeah. and put some really good sparring on. That's where we can see, like, Sixth Sense Alex Emlund is in the corner for the Section 18 fighter. We know that Liam James and a few others have these associations. So, obviously putting that experience to good effect this evening. I know Phil De Vries is a man in that part of the world. He's a very good and big grappler. Yeah, it certainly is. Feet on the hips again for Chris Scott. Running but down the clock, last 20 so seconds. So basically, guys, keep working and round two. Matt Nielsen's doing a good job of just, every time he steps over, it's forcing Chris Scott to re-establish that guard. He is looking to work, but he's, just, he's got other things to think about other than his sweep. You know, and as this fight goes on, the grips are going to get harder. He's going to get that, you know, a little bit more fatigued. Well, Nielsen said he had a better weight cut for this contest. He's taken on a gluten-free diet, found himself lighter at a more advanced stage of the fight camp. So hopefully that will mean that he has more energy in the tank to go a little bit harder in his third round. Both fighters breathing hard. And here are some of the it successful was strikes. Very good pressure from Chris Scott in those opening exchanges. But once Matt Nielsen was able to, to get that takedown, it was just constant work rate of, you know, don't let the guy back up. You know, takedowns are a hard thing to earn sometimes in mixed martial arts. And once you get one, you don't really want to give it up. You do it right, you only need to do it once in the round. And, you know, Matt Nielsen, once he gets that top position, he's grinding out his opponent very, very effectively here. So Nilsson continuing to break down the defenses of Mark 1 Scott. A smile on Nilsson's face as they enter the final stanza. A smile also on Chris Scott. They've enjoyed this one. Oh, really nice to see. Good show of sportsmanship from these two gentlemen. Oh, Chris Scott really looking to fire. These shots. I think he knows that the judges are probably leaning the way of Matt Nielsen at this stage. Good defensive guard work from Nielsen, though. Hands coming up high, forearms and elbows engaging. 
Yeah, Nelson getting the basics right as well, still moving nicely, keeping a high guard. And circling off as well. As I think Chris it, Scott has a more direct approach to his striking. I think Nielsen has to be careful he doesn't get drawn into a bit of a slugfest here. We've seen one, once Chris Scott, Scott starts wanting to come forward and throw in volume, he really will press that point. Yeah, some sneaky elbows being thrown as well there, Josh. And no kicks, interestingly, from either one. I think they both appreciate that the other's able to capitalize. Yeah, for sure. You know, score those takedowns off them. Nielsen loosening up. Oh, good work again to get in. Some of those punches from Chris Scott, though, were just missing by the smallest of margins. So Chris Scott looking to make a boxing match out of this third round. Oh, went to the body very nicely. Yeah, we heard a significant And once there. again. A little bit of snap is disappearing from the striking of Matt Nielsen. Yeah, I just think his energy systems may be He's not quite the... Uh, oh, there we go. Good takedown, looking for the, the power double, but runs into the cage. Yeah, Scott sprung back up. He's had a lot of success in this area so far in this fight, though. See if he can drive forward and change level again. Oh, but just disengaging fairly easily there. He's got to be careful that... Good elbow <laughs> attack from Chris Scott. And he's really piling it on now in the third. Yeah, Chris Scott finding his range now. He likes this... Shorter range, this dirty boxing stance. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of scoring shots. success, Josh. A barrage of strikes. A good cut, yeah, Nilsson as well. Good frame to engage the elbows. Of course, the hands are coming right up if uh, Scott wanted to go back to the body. Oh, but Fight I think that's Nilsson back, has landed a shot from somewhere. I really didn't see that one sneak through. Oh, it was a bit of a ghost punch, Josh. But it had Chris Scott tumbling. Well, Matt Nielsen turning the tables. Yeah. Thought the striking exchange was starting to move towards Chris Scott, but Matt Nielsen has found an opening from somewhere. Well, wow. Chris Scott is back to his feet, so recovering well. Credit to his conditioning. Yeah, the He's looking to break away. Referee forced to look for a moment, though. He doesn't seem bothered by it, Josh. He's coming forward very confidently once again. Oh, first kick of the fight, I believe. Yeah, good thudding, right low kick. Trying to use the knees as well. He's mixing the strikes up nicely. He's just not quite finding the mark with them yet. He's sort of established the range with his punches and some of the short elbows, but the other strikes are still a, a bit searching right now. Well, this is this again is Nielsen territory. I think that Chris Scott does need to break away a little bit, or at least you know, do his very best to free up those arms so he can turn some elbows in. Yeah, time fast running out here. Nielsen now using some knees, looking for the tie guard. Chris Scott really plants his feet when he hits the one-two. Once again to the body. Not slowing Nielsen down too much though at this stage. No, they're definitely landing though. We can hear the thud from our commentary position. Very still nice technical strikes though. And great takedown from Matt Nielsen. Straight underneath the incoming strikes. Seized on that opportunity the very well. I think we're going to see him try and really wind down the clock here. These last few seconds. Well, we saw him get a a head and arm triangle in his last outing. He hasn't been able to stick a submission this evening. But he's come with a lot of pressure. And a really great display of mixed martial arts from these two middleweights. They really put their heart and souls into those performances. Chris Scott tried his very best in the third to turn the heat up. But Matt Nielsen still had plenty more to give.
but it's in the hands of the judges. Take a look at some of that action. And we see Max Nielsen running forward, getting a double. And this was a really illuminating, striking performance this third round. And it was the pressure strikes from Max Nielsen that forced Chris Scott to take himself to the mat. And then once Nielsen had him back on the mat, we saw how masterful he can be. Very heavy in that top position, able to nullify Chris Scott from making any real advancements. And a big sigh from Max Nielsen. We know that both of these gladiators have been in a grueling battle. Whoever has come away with the victory has fought very, very hard indeed. And we have to wait no longer as Joe Martinez is with us in the cage. Let's throw it over to him for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards, and here are the judges' totals. Judge Cartledge, 30-27. Judges Sledge and Leatherby, 29-28. All three, four, your winner by unanimous decision. From the red corner, Max Nilsson! So a triumphant return for Matt Nielsen. Hard luck to Chris Scott, did ever so well, but our winner is now with Here Josh. with our winner, Matt Nielsen. Matt, calling on all your grappling experience for a, a very controlling performance there. Give us your thoughts on the fight. Uh, I got the win, which I wanted to and worked for, uh, but it didn't pan out the way I wanted to. I was hoping to showcase some, uh, some evolved striking, but the ring rust got the better of me, so I went back to what I knew. I'm tired. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. Uh, a, a bit of time away from us here at Cage Rose. We saw you back in Beirut in February last year. What, what does it feel like to be back here? Oh, it's, it's great to be back. Uh, I would have wanted to entertain a bit more. I did the best I could, and I hope you guys are, are happy with it. You mentioned on your trip out here that you, you're putting the grappling to one side now and really focusing on, on the mixed martial arts. Yeah, you couldn't tell, could you? <laughs> Uh, family, fa new family back home watching? Oh yeah, I have my Elsa. Love you, my wife Milly. love you guys, and friends and family, of course. Well, Matt's great performance from you here. Look forward to seeing you again. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Nielsen.